No. Right. Okay. Um, so thank you so much for coming. I'm just going to say it again. Thank you for coming. Um, I'm Molly Allen, head teacher of Alveston Infant and Nursery School, and this is Jane Seeson, um, who is English lead. Um, and we're going to talk to you about the teaching of reading and phonics here at Alveston Infant and Nursery School. Okay. So um, I firstly want to start by talking about the importance of reading. Um, and reading isn't simply about um, being able to read words that are in front of a child. And um, we read for understanding. And so many times um, a child can um, read every single word in a book, but actually they've got no real understanding of what they are reading. So it could be a comprehension. So children have to comprehend and truly understand what they're reading. Well, a barrier to that might be they haven't got the vocabulary. They don't know what those words mean, potentially. It could be that they do know what the words mean, but actually they haven't developed that comprehension side where they can completely internalise what they're reading, use and apply it later on. Um, so it's also really important to remember that reading does unlock success in all of the curriculum areas, and it's absolutely crucial. So here at Alvis Infant Nursery School, we really, really prioritise the teaching of reading, and you will see that in daily practice. You will see that when you're um, looking in your child's reading diary. Now, I know that recently, we've obviously, we've come back to school, we've assessed all of our children, and we've got a brand new reading approach, which has involved yep. reading every single one of those reading books yep. on our shelves <laughs> and relabeling every single one of them. So thank you for bearing with us at this time, but hopefully you will really see um, just how much we're reading with your, child, your children. Um, you will see on here as well, I'm just going to move this a moment because I actually can't see. Um, so you will see, oh, I've lost them all. Oh, I've got somebody else in the waiting room, admit. Sorry, guys. Um, it, you will see on there that it says various studies have shown there's a strong association between reading success and children's developmental outcomes and life chances. And that is absolutely, I think it's quite scary when you, um, when you read the research on that. So actually, the more a child loves books and the more that they read, the more likely they are to go on and become successful later in life. And that is why it's absolutely crucial that we get it right for these children. Um, so we give them those foundations that they can build upon later in life. Um, and you will see again, it's just more, more underneath it. So there's that positive link between the attitudes towards reading and the outcomes. If a child thinks they're not a good reader, they won't want to read. And our reading approach really focuses on, focuses on making sure these children love reading. And it, it really, what we're really trying to do is develop that self-confidence. Yeah. Well, um, we're successful in their reading, don't we? We do. And, and, and hopefully you'll, you'll see that. It's not about racing through a reading scheme. It completely isn't about that. So, you know, if you're thinking, well, my child's had the same book for three days, Days, there is a specific reason why we're going to do this and we'll explain that to you slightly later. Um, I've got on here about praise, it's absolutely crucial. Um, you know, if a child is attempting to read or write, um, it is important that we praise them for trying their best. If they're not trying their best, we need to change their attitude. We want the children to give, to give their best and to try their best. So it is important to praise them. And I know how frustrating it potentially can be for parents when you're trying to teach them a sound and I don't know, you're trying to teach them and you come back to it three days later and they look at you thinking, hmm, still not sure. And we have to remember that teaching and learning are two different entities. I can teach you something now and actually I can check in two weeks if you learnt it, but chances are you won't have done. So it's important that we distinguish the teaching and learning, keep revisiting, and that's what this approach will do. Um, I do want to say we do have the excellent results here at Alvis and Infant and Nursery School. You know, we've had, um, I think it was 2018, it was my first year, 2017, we got 98% in our phonics screening checks. We got um, a letter from Nick Gibb um, and the exact same, when we last had our last SATS results that we had to do, we had 37% 37% of our year two children achieving greater depth. So those higher attaining readers, it's important that we are catering for the children who um, are at the standard, but we're also really stretching those other children to really truly achieve their potential. Um, so yes, we've got amazing results. And I do, I do want to say that actually it's important that we get the provision right. Um, if you get your provision right for the children, the results will come afterwards. Um, and I just want to say, you know, to really, really trust us. You might sit there and think, oh, why are they reading this book? Or, oh, they've had this book for three days. But actually, you have got to trust us. A lot of research and hard work has gone into this. Um, and I will say, we, um, 
as a school, we're always looking for ways to improve. Um, and in the summer, summer term, we had a reading deep dive. So an inspector came in to look at our reading provision, gave us some bullet points. We went away, digested, researched, and actually we thought, no, there are improvements to be made. And that's why we are changing things for, for our children. Um, and you said you've really started to see yeah, already. Yeah, it's, it's really clear to see, actually. It's nice to see as well, because the children are actually, you know, digesting a lot more of it. And the comprehension is really coming along with that as well, and the fluency. So, you know, it's, it's, it's working. It's having an effect. Well, this is a bit weird. I know. <laughs> right, okay, so I'm just going to move on then. Um, she says I'm going to move on, but nothing happens. Sorry, guys, why is this not moving? Why is this not moving? Shall I minimize it? Yeah, minimize it. Right, there we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. Um, so phonics is the process whereby children are taught to both read and write. Um, it's not just reading, it's writing as well. And reading will always come first. That is really, really fundamental and crucial. And I'm going to tell the absolute truth, and I tell the story every single time. I'll never forget, um, I went to Birmingham University, and I sat there at my first phonics session, and I sat in my presentation, and I folded my arms, and I went, oh, phonics. I went, like, I've not been taught phonics, and I can read. Like, <laughs> what is this going to be about? And I genuinely thought, what load of rubbish. And I thought, what are they going to teach us? Um, and the more I started listening, and the more I started to use and apply it, the more I really felt like, actually, this changes how children are learning. And it's so, so empowering when you use the phonics first approach. Not every child will learn with phonics, and we have got other things in place which we'll share with you, but the vast majority of children learn through their phonics. So it's absolutely important that we get it right for the children. It's consistent across school and that we help parents so that they, that you know exactly how we're teaching and can help at home. Um, so we have just got some of the terminology then. So a blend. So a blend is where you, um, a child puts sounds together to make a word. So if I say snap, Mr. Heeson will blend and say snap. If I say snake, Mr. Heeson will say snake. There you go. And if I say shop, you will say shop. There we go. You've done some blending. <laughs> um, and then I'll say change your part and say, ooh, good blending. <laughs> Try to do it. Ooh, ooh good yeah, blending. Yeah, there we go. Um, so, um, a lot of the time, one letter makes one sound. Where have I got a pen? Mm -hmm. I can't okay, see myself yet. Yeah. Can you see me on there? All yeah. oh, right. I can't <laughs> see. I've, I've hidden myself. So, for example, I'll just give you my camera. Okay. Oh, I'm going to make my camera part. <laughs> so, for example, mm -hmm. it's one letter making one sound. It'll have this little dot underneath it to symbolise that it's one letter, one sound. Um, if there is two letters making one sound, it's called a digraph. So for example, if you had um, A and an I, and it's not an A and an I, it's an A and an I. These are the letter names. So it's important to use the letter names as well. Oh, the graphemes. Um, so the, yeah, yeah, the graphemes are the letter names. Yeah. So the A and the I here are making an A sound, and it's a digraph. There are two letters making one sound. So we say to the children, turn to your partner and say, two, two letters, letters, one sound, sound digraph. So the children will do that. Um, so you have two letters making a one sound. So if we were going to read the word sail, it would be the children would read a or sail. That's how it would work. And we can see there as well what Miss Alan's doing is she's segmenting it, so she's segmenting the sounds, and when we sweep it across as well, we're blending those sounds back together again. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, so that's two letters, one sound, and it's called a so where there are three letters making one sound it's called a if you're at home you can say it what's it called it's called a trigraph and um, so for example um in night mm -hmm. i hope they can can you see this on that screen yeah, yeah. I need to go take a, time, mate. a bit wonky going down oh i know it's <laughs> the pressure <laughs> so you can see we've got n i night so three letters here are making that i sound so that's the trigraph um a quadgraph is four letters making one sound um such as for example if i give a um, vote or a tort oh i was gonna give it tough i'll go on them yeah okay so we've got oh, no. no that's no, not, it's right. not. Oh. oh never mind, oh, mind. try again let's go for should we go for board? okay so you can see here that the O, the U, the G, and the H, and it's not our OG, it's not that, it's O, U, a G, and an H. Because if you start confusing the sound and the letter names, it becomes very confusing for the children. 
So you can see here, you've got one, two, three, four sounds, make, four letters, sorry, making one sound. So we've got the or bought. Um, it is important that you talk to that about, talk about this with the children and they know um, that it's four letters making one sound. If you take away the word and sound out bought, the or bought, you know there are only three sounds. Well, I know the makes a sound and I know t makes a sound. So the O, the U, the G and the H must be making an or sound. And I would say that's my biggest top tip. If you're struggling with sound buttoning with your children yeah. or with children that you're working with, Take the take the written letter away yeah. and sound out the word, and then that will help you. And do that with the children as well. Encourage them to sound it out so they can count the sounds. So they know exactly what they're going to be writing down then as well. Yeah. Okay. So the split diagram. Oh, my favourite. Are you going to tell the story? I will tell the story. Oh, okay. So I would say to the children a long, long time ago um, that um, let's do. Oh, you, you're just um, <laughs> you're just skipping ahead. This one. <laughs> that. Well, so for example, if like? you have um. Loan. Let's do loan. Okay, yeah. Line. And would you like me to write loan? No, I'd, so what I would tell the children, sorry, I'll do it. Why you do it? <laughs> <laughs> so I would teach, so I would teach the children that a long time ago, loan was spelt like this. U, O, N. We know this makes an O sound in to and do. So they know that that makes an O sound and it's a long vowel sound. And we start to teach that in, well, actually even in yeah, reception, we'll teach that. Yeah. They'll learn about what a vowel and consonant sound is. Mm -hmm. So we teach the children that the O and the E make an O sound. But actually in this case, something terrible happened. I'd say, do you know what children, something really terrible happened. The O and the E were best friends. Turn to your partner and say, ooh, they were best friends. Ooh, ooh they, they were, were best, best friends. friends. And do you know what best friends do with each other? They chat and they chat and they chat and they chat and they chat. Who's your best friend? I want to get them to talk about who their best friend is and they tell me who their best friend is. Oh, I've got a message in the chat. Sorry. We can't see the board. Oh, no. Should we get a bit closer? Yeah. Is that better, Michelle? Can you see us better? better I know it, but some of the others might not because I've seen these before. But no, can't see the board still. It's the one that can't see. Mm -hmm. I see the contrast between the front and the front. Mm. Is it worth is it worth stopping screen share for a second? So can you see my can you see my um I think it's because it's because we're sharing the screen. Um we've only got a little snippet that we can see. Yeah, if you've um okay, I'll stop screen sharing. Yeah, I can see a lot better now. Or not. It's an improvement. Yeah. <laughs> it's a step in the right direction. I think it's better. I think it's better in black. I'll do it in black. That's a bit better. If you tap on the picture of the board in the corner, it will stop the screen. Oh, yeah, I've enlarged it. Right. Okay. So we'll talk about loan again. So I'll teach them a long time ago that loan was spelled like this. L-O. Mm, loan. So I'd teach them that. And we'd chat, 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 chatting. The O and E would chat, 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 chatting. And one day the teacher said, Right, I've had enough. Stop talking. Otherwise, I'm going to have to split you up. And they looked at each other and they thought, Shall we stop chatting? And they tried their hardest, but they just couldn't do it. So the teacher one day said, Right, that's it. And she split them up. She did. Oh. Mm. And she put the N in the middle, split them up, but they love each other so much that they hold hands underneath the table really cheekily so that they are still friends. So the children read L, O, N, loan. And that is a split diagraph. Um, and it's the same, split diagraphs always make long vowel sounds. So you've got A. Make a shake. E. Uh, no, it's not. Don't leave, just come please. I. Smile, crocodile. And you or U as in yeah. huge and flute. Yeah. So you can see there are the split diagraphs that you have. Okay. Um, so a grapheme is the letter, um, the letter and the letter name. So I teach we teach the children. Oh, I can't see my face now. Sorry. I don't know. I don't, oh, it doesn't matter. You can't see my face. It um, so the grapheme is the actual letter name. And I always say to children, you have a name, your name is James. And a letter has a name, it's an A, it's an H, it's an S. Um, and that they know that the grapheme is their letter name and the written letter. Um, so the grapheme is S and the phoneme, which is the sound, think about being on the phone, is S. 
So the graphene is the written letter and the phoneme is the sound that that graphene or letter is making. And I was trying to do the actions with the children as well. So I'll say, tell me the graphene. So I'm writing it. Or I'll say, tell me the phoneme. And I'll pull my ear so that I'm looking at my ears. So I'll have to sound. pull your ears. Well, I'll pull my ear. <laughs> <laughs> and then pull my ear. Don't worry. <laughs> OK. So um, that is the, the graphene and phoneme. A mnemonic is something that we use to help children remember. Say, for example, letter formation. Um, or, for example, a particular sound. So you might see your children saying, um, so they might say, eh, eh, Ellie the elephant. So you can see that there's a, pi a picture of an elephant and there's the grapheme E on there. The children will see the elephant and it will remind them that it's eh, eh, Ellie the elephant. And we use mnemonics for different kinds of things. So children do the action as well. So they go, eh, eh, Ellie the elephant. And sometimes when you show a child an eh on its own without that, they might look at you and think, hmm. And the moment you put your hand up and do that, they'll go, eh, eh because it actually connects with another part of their brain. And then hopefully this will then be committed to long-term memory from using the mnemonic to help them. We also have mnemonic. Um, I always tell this story. I taught him um, a boy, he was in year five, I think he was in year four. And I couldn't for the life of me get him to, um, to write the word um, does. Um, he would write it D, U, Z. I had this, D, O, E, S. I had all kinds of things. Um, oh, sorry, that's how I taught, taught him to do it, sorry. He wouldn't do D-O-E-S. Um, and I taught him, donkeys on every sock. And it sounded ridiculous. And when it was then in year six, he's like, donkeys on every sock. And I said, what? I said, what are you talking about? He said, you taught me that, Miss Anne. And I thought, yeah, that is something I would teach. It sounds crazy. It sounds bonkers, don't you? Um, but it's helping children to remember in whatever way you can get them to do that. Um, it, it, it really is helpful. It's like the word said, silly Albert. Silly, S for silly, A for Albert, I for if, and D for dirty. Silly Albert is dirty, and I'll put dots on here, but it's F, D, Z, and that's the naughty letter, and I'll come on to that slightly later. Or we use with wood as well, don't we? What, oh, you lucky duck. I yeah. like that one for you too oh, as well. Oh, you lucky duck. Yeah. Yeah. There's lots of different mnemonics. Um, segmenting is where children or adults um, split a word down into sounds, and that could be to read it, or to write it. So you can segment any word. So if I want to segment the word um, jumper ch or mm, uh, jumper, or if I'm going to read jumper, I can go j or mm, uh, jumper. Um, so decoding is when a child breaks the word down specifically in order to read it. So if you've got the word Sam, I'm going to decode it uh, mm, Sam and I've blended it together again. And then encoding is when a child breaks the word down in order to spell it, such as um, if you had mouse, 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 and the child, what comes first? Mm. So they're encoding at that time. Okay, a CBC word. Do you want to go for CBC? I can do okay, CBC now. word. So when children start to read, um, they first of all start looking at CB words, which when we have a C and a B, the, con the C is the consonant and the B is the vowel. So it might start off looking at words like at, for instance. Um, as, as the children start um, learning more and more with their sounds, we, put, we move on to looking at CBC words. So CBC words are consonant, vowel, consonant words. So that could be as simple as, well, I don't know if we're going to be able to see it now. So we could have a word like this just here, which would be at. Tap. So we've got a consonant, a vowel, and a consonant. And the children will start applying their phonic knowledge to be able to read these CBC words. Brilliant. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to share my screen again. And I do just want to say that it's so important you use the purest of sounds. And this is the biggest thing. And I'll show you a little video and I will share the link with you. It's so important that you don't say t. In t, you can hear t and a uh, t. It's t, t, t. It's not s. Because in s, I hear s, uh, s. It's s. In m, it's not m, it's m. Mm. Yeah. So it's the purest sound. And that is one of the huge things that we notice quite a lot when children come to us. Yeah. And um, if it's not picked up as well, we have found, well, it does affect their writing as well. So what happens is when they're hearing the extra sound, when they're writing it out, they're putting an extra sound into their spelling as well. So I'm just going to play you a video, she says. Synthetic phonics is a way of teaching reading. Children are taught to read letters or groups of letters by saying the sounds they represent. So they are taught that the letter M sounds like M mm when we say it. 
When teaching synthetic phonics, it's really important to say the sounds correctly. You must not add an uh at the end of a sound. So you should say mm, not m, and all, not l. This makes it much easier for a child to blend the sounds together to make words. There are 26 letters in the alphabet, but 44 sounds in the English language. This means that some sounds are made using pairs of letters. These letter pairs are called digraphs. When three letters are used to make a single sound, it is known as a trigraph. I'm just going to stop it there and you can always click on that yourselves. Can I just double check? Um, Michelle, I know you're there. Could you hear that or not? Or yeah, yeah. It, wasn't, it wasn't linking up with the picture, but we'll clear it, yeah. Brilliant, thanks so much. Okay, so that is really important to use the purest sound. And what we're going to do now um, is we're going to talk you through a simple phonics session. Um, no, we're not. I'm going to go through terminology first. Oh, jump yeah. in the gun. Jump in <laughs> yeah. the gun. So we always use my turn, your turn in phonics. Um, and we do that because increased participation leads to increased involvement, increased confidence. If a child is sat in a phonic lesson like this at the back, they're not participating. And what we know is that when they participate, they learn. So we have a lot of my turn, your turn. So I might say, my turn, um, shop, your turn. Shop. My turn, your turn. And we would expect every child to be joining in. So if, if a child isn't joining in, we say, oh, we're just going to try again. So everybody's joining in. Um, so we would make sure that we do that. Yeah. We also use my turn, your turn across the curriculum. So it could be with vocabulary. So not just in phonics, but it could be that we're teaching a new um, word. So the word might be um, I think coast. Word, coast. And we'd say to the children, um, what would coast mean? And we'd let them explore that. And we'd say, change your partner and say, coast is at the edge of the land. And we'd say, coast is at the edge of the land. Change your partner and say, coast, coast is, is at the, the edge, edge of the, the land. land. And they turn to each other and they will say it to embed that key vocabulary. Um, and that really does go towards that contextualising what they're reading. If they haven't got the words and they haven't got the language, they will not understand, they will not be a successful reader. Um, there's so many studies on it, um, and they're calling it the language gap at the moment. And they're saying that the reason children aren't being successful is because they haven't got the language, they don't know what the words mean, and that's why they're not doing well. Um, so it's important, if your child comes across a word in a reading book and they don't know what it means, you need to encourage them and say to you, what does that word mean? You need to be asking me what that word means so we can talk through it together and don't assume they know what it means. Yeah. I think I had yeah, two children didn't know what a rose was. They were like, rose, what's rose? And I had to explain that there were two definitions of rose, but they genuinely didn't know what it meant. Yeah. So cover those words yeah. with them. We try and train them to monitor their own understanding of that as well, don't we? So they can ask those questions and find out the answers. Yeah. And it is a part of our school improvement this year. Do you want to do that? I can do take it. Oh, just, we're just, we're just until oh, the puppet. Don't worry. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, I can do name the puppet. So um, each class has got a puppet. Now, this is one of our puppets that we've got in my class, but I've also got a grandma and granddad who are very silly and they can only talk in sounds, Miss Allen. So what happens is in our lesson, so that our children can practice blending sounds together, our puppet can only talk in sounds. So it might be, for instance, we might get a child to come to the front and sound out some words. They might say, shh, up. And then everyone else will say, shh. And they might say, ah. Oh. Oh, that might, might say window. Yes, well done. Um, so that's just a way to encourage the children to practice their blending skills as well. With that one. And then the puppet fingers are when children are break. Often they say, I don't know how to spell um window. And you say, You do. Can you sound window out? Yeah. 
Ooh, it, n, d, o. I wonder, well, you can spell it then. We get them to put the puppet on to sound it out and then they have it go. They're not going mad. They're not counting mm -hmm. that they are breaking a word down into sound in order to write it. And we have the sound mats that children um, use in order to help them do that. Yeah, so I've, got, I've just brought two here to show you. So what we have is these are the first sounds that the children will learn. Can you see that? Uh, can you see that? <laughs> up a bit <laughs> yeah. so this is the first sounds that the children use and eventually as they learn more and more sounds um, they'll encounter this one here which has got all of the sounds in that the children will need to know um, and these are available through Fresh Phonics as well if you did want to purchase them through their website okay um, so the push oh, this year. oh I can do push Sorry, no, yes I'll push turns, um, I'm, going to, <laughs> I'm going to quickly show one of the word cards just so I've got an example just here so during one of our phonics lessons what we do is we encourage the children to push and squeeze makes me laugh because we're both laughing and just <laughs> <can't> <laughs> I'm not really sure where I am on the picture right now um, so what we ask the children to do is first of all get two fingers together and it's really important when the children are pushing and sweeping they use their two fingers as a way to develop their muscles in their arms as well so we get them to use two fingers and what I will do is I'll say my turn so I'll get my fingers now say s n a or snail so what i'm doing is i'm pushing each sound as i'm going across now if it's a single letter sound i'm pressing the buttons with my two fingers if i come across a digraph or a trigraph or a quadraph what i'm doing is i'm sweeping at that point as well to show that that's more than one sound so i'll go s n a or snail and as i sweep it that shows that i'm blending those sounds back together again okay if it's a naughty digraph or naughty Ooh, letters yes. say for example you want you've got well, shall I stop staring again? <laughs> so you can see. So in want, I'm too far this way. Oh, that's not very good, is it? It's rickety. Mm, rickety rackety nice word. <laughs> So in want, we don't say ooh, ah, nt, want. We say ooh, ah, nt, want. Um, I know obviously in the National Curriculum Appendix, we do teach the children that after an all sound, if you hear an O, oh, mm. it's always an A grapheme. But if you are coming across that word, say in reception or before you've taught that, mm -hmm. we would teach the children that this is a naughty letter. So you have to tell it off and say to your partner, oh, that's so naughty, 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 naughty. And they love it. And the National Curriculum does say that you have to highlight the relationship between the grapheme, the written letter, and the phoneme that the, the letter is making, no matter how unusual that representation is. Um, so we teach the children, oh, oh, it's a naughty letter, so it has a star underneath it. Mm, want and the children get to tally it off so they go oh ah, mm, want um, and we have to say yeah, watch out for that naughty one so that's a naughty letter okay so a silent letter is when um it's what well, it on the tin there is a silent letter um and we put a sh underneath it like this but we do not say sh the children put their fingers to their lips um so it could be like Back in people, so or in Wednesday, so in people, we have got E, and then you've got a sh, you don't say it, and the child will go E, people, so they know, they're, vision, they're visually, and they've actually done something that reminds them of that silent letter in there. Absolutely. Uh, the next down? one, slam down. Yes. So um, as we're working through words with the children, we'll go through our little pack of words. We'll get the children to do my turn, your turn, pressing and sweeping. Eventually, as the children's um, confidence is developing and their fluency is growing, what we expect is the children won't need to be able to um, decode these as they would normally. They might be able to read them by sight straight away. So part of the slam down session, what we might do with the children is we might quickly do a time challenge where they have to read the word as quick as they can. So we might say three, two, one, snail and slam it down because we encourage them then to use their sight reading skills as they're progressing from using their phonics skills. And it is important, I think we do notice children get into a habit of sounding out because we'll have a go, brilliant sounding out, that's excellent sounding out. And then they think that they have to sound everything out. And that's not what we need them to do. We want them to sound out initially and then be able to read fluently and confidently. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Optons. Should we should we come on to that? I just I just don't know if they've quite uh, yeah, but right. sound mats as well. Sound mats, we've spoke about sound mats, yeah. so I just think they're more a teaching point. Okay, yeah. so if I share my screen with you again then. Whoopsie Daisy. And I've just got a little video for you now. I bet you're bored of listening to our voices. Here we go. <laughs> Sorry, I was actually oh. 
I was actually going to say this was a, I'd made this video when I was working at another school. So uh, I'd, I'd, I've not got the school wrong. It's just I was working at another school. as well but we are going to talk you through a phonic lesson um, but it's really important we do not stream for phonics we make sure that every single child is taught the exact same um, phoneme or rule or spelling pattern or whatever we are doing if a child is below where they should be what we do is we make sure the specific intervention and we'll talk about what that looks like to help them catch up to where they need to be um, because if we split the phonics when will the children ever get that knowledge to ever catch up with their peers. When is that going to happen? Um, and we have really seen the impact in our results with that. So it's having those high aspirations for all children. They will get there and we'll do everything we can. So a typical phonic lesson then. So at the very beginning of a phonic lesson, and remember it's, it's got to be energetic, exciting and fun. It's not, let's do phonics. Okay, children, get your right word out. It's right everybody today, we've got phonics. What are we going to do? Oh, let's get our puppet out. And I often do lots of silly games with this puppet. They absolutely <laughs> love it when I, I just cause carnage with it. So I often say to the children, g -S, and they will say, yes, what, what, I, I, ad, had, or for the breakfast. Breakfast. Oh, who's going to guess what we have for breakfast? Oh. Put up your hand, and the children will put their hands up. Oh, you've got your hand up, and I'm always like, <laughs> the puppet will always tickle them or grab <laughs> them or do something a bit cheeky. Was it toast? Mm, uh, oh, wasn't toast. Good try there. Thank you. And the puppet will go around um, and select different children. It might not be that. I often say to them, guess what day it is today? And I make up it's his birthday or his, I don't know, anything. <laughs> um, they never seem to get it right, but it's just, it, they, they like to do it. Um, then the child will come out with the puppet and we'll put, we'll put a timer on. So we often say to children, we'll put half a minute on. How many seconds in half a minute they'll go? 30, 30 seconds, seconds in half, half a minute. minute. So you're bringing in other curriculum areas in there. So the children will then um, come up the front. And it's amazing. I mean, I taught in your class and your children. I actually think it was me. I have Donna's on here. <laughs> but she was like, oh, like oh, she yes, just didn't yeah. need 
it's amazing how quickly children can think of things. Mm -hmm. So um, a child will come up to the front um, and they will talk in sound and the other children have to blend. And I'll always say, no, who's looking, who's, who's really joining in? Who will be chosen next? Um, so the child then have 30 seconds to sound out as many words as they can. So they might go, eh, oh, mm, mute, uh, oast, uh, ouch, ass, ass, uh, oat. And the other children will blend those words back. So it'll be like a bit of a ping pong between them. Um, some children aren't that confident to do that straight away. And if I wasn't feeling that confident that morning and I'm sat there thinking, Mr. Heeson might whisper in my ear. So here he goes. Don't give me a hard Oh, word. I don't try to think that. Ch uh, and you would say, chair. Yeah. And I might look a bit confused again. Mm. And Mr. Oh, Heeson would whisper again. Say. Eat, and you would say sweet. Okay, so that's the puppet at the beginning. Then what we have is we have a new phoneme or grapheme. So I'd say to children, right today we've got a new phoneme. Turn to your partner and say, ooh, it's a new phoneme. Ready? Ooh, it's a new phoneme. And I'd show, I'd show the um, a bit crazy. So I'd show the new phoneme. Do I need to stop stop the show? Let me stop sharing. Okay, so I'd show them the new phoneme. So you can see the A and the I here. Um, and I'd say it's an A and an I sound. It's, a in, it's an A and an I. And together, does anybody know what sound, what phoneme the A and the I make? And they might have a clue because they've got a snail in a jail. Um, so I would say it's A, your turn. I'd say A. 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 And I'd say my turn, A, your turn. A. A. It's two letters, one sound digraph. It's Two letters, one sound time. And then I would teach them the action. So I'd say it's A, snail in the jail. Can you all do it? It's A, snail in the jail. Oh, dear. I was asking my last week. Go to jail. I had to work out why the snail went to jail. Oh, he's not been a very nice snail. He's going too fast at one point. Oh, was it? Yes, definitely. It's not a slow snail, it's a fast snail. Oh, I think that's quite creative, Adam. Adam put him like in charge. Um. So um, they would say A, snail in jail, and they'd learn the, the action that goes with that. Then what will happen is these are the sounds or the phonemes that they probably struggled with potentially previously. And I say to the children, today, when you, say, you see A, you're going to say A, there it is. And I say, what are you going to say? And it's important they say A. They don't just say, there it is. And it's important they can see and you show them the A sound, which is here. So I would say, I'm going to catch you out. Turn to your and say, you can't catch me. And they're going, you can't catch me. me. And I'd hide it behind my whiteboard or I might just flick it through. So they'd go, I'm going to model on Miss T's and see if he's a good student. Are you ready, Miss T's? Yeah. Ready? Okay, I, bright night flight. Ooh, moo poo. There's a thief. I thought I put that in as a tricky one for us. A hairy fairy. And I always seem to be the hairiest fairy. And it's A. Oh, there it is. Oh, oh well done. Nearly got you. Nearly got me. Fantastic. So I'm going to give a praise word for spotting that. And we go through that. It's a really quick recap of where is that sound and what does it look like in context. We need our own television program. You won't see us next week. We'll get commissioned. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know what we'd be called. Oh, no. be <laughs> Names welcome, nice ones, ain't they? Okay, so um, then what we would do is we do some my turn, your turn. There's been some words that have got A in them. So every single child um, will have a base pack of words, and then there'll also be some more difficult words for the children who need that extra bit more. So we're learning A and I, but you can see in here, there's an ED ending in here, which isn't taught towards the end of year one. So we start to teach the children that the E and D is making a D sound. And you can also see that the word obtained is a difficult word. And we talk about what does it mean to obtain something? It means to get something. Um, and we've got then got maintain to keep something, maintaining. So it's when you're keep, oh gosh, you know, <laughs> I'm not mirrored. Um, it's when they're keeping something up and you're maintaining something. And it's important that we really teach the vocabulary here. So I'd be saying, my turn, everybody, and everybody will be joining in. But if not, I'll be saying, I'm going to do it again. So everybody's joining in. So it's my turn. Point your fingers out, everybody. Snail. Snail. Your turn. Snail. Snail. 
Oh, snail. Oh, I've got I've got a star pupil on my zoo. <laughs> wow. Should we give a fantastic. 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 Oh, I like that. Yeah. Who, Who did, did a good, good job? job? You, 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 you. you, you. you. <laughs> right, so I've got another one. My turn. Strain. Strain. Your turn. Strain. Oh, what does it mean if you strain something? Mm. Mm, that's interesting. What do you think, Mr. Heath? Mm, I might give an example to show, just oh, to show. No. So sometimes if I want to put a box on a heavy, on a top shelf, and it's quite heavy, I have to strain and go, and there lift up go. to strain to put yeah, it on the top shelf. It. Okay, my turn. Ooh, ace. Waste, your turn. Ooh, ace. Waste. Well, what do we call it when it's too late to make him one sound again, Mr. He's there? Make it's there? a diagram. And we say, put your hands on your waist, and the children would put their hands on the waist. Um, and we probably talk a lot of the time when you ask the child, what does that mean? They might think about, they might think it's waste as in rubbish. So we talk about the fact, no, that is that is waste as well, but this is a different waste, it's spelled differently. So we start to talk about homophones and homographs. Um, and then you will see there's always an alien oh. word. So in year one, so you've got this word here, and they go, it's an alien. Oh, my God. Ooh. Oh, no. So we always put an alien word in, because in year one, they have a phonics screening check. And at the end of the, well, in the phonics screening check, there are alien words to check that children aren't just sight reading, that they're using and applying their phonics. So it's important that that's in there, and they know how to read an alien word. So when they come across it, the phonics screening check, they don't go, and um, because often children will self-correct so if they read nake they might go at neck and try and change it to make it fit so it's important that you have that in there yeah and it helps them when they come across other words that they don't know as well doesn't it in their yeah. normal everyday reading even though they might not know that word they can still use their phonic skills to read them so then we have an action word so an act the action words are the tricky words so it's where we try to get the children to um, just be able to say a word. And you can sound button me, me, me. Some people say you can't sound out a word that's tricky. You can sound out any word and that's what we encourage our children to do. But the action word, the children will read and say me. And they'll go me. So when they see it, they'll do the action and they'll say me. And there will be um, high frequency words or tricky words, whatever you want to call them in the children's um, spellings. Um, we do them every single day um, with their um, phonics yeah. um, and then the children who are only ready for that little set of words will then go off and be the teacher so we'll check they can do it and then we'll put them into little groups and we'll say right who's going to be a really good teacher today who's going to be making sure all their children are joining in so I might say all right Miss Heason you can be the teacher with these three children here and I'm going to come around and check how you're getting on I might then keep the rest of the class or the rest of the children who are ready for that bit more those children who are really able who need that bit more and I've got these words so I'd say my turn obtained obtained your turn and the children would sound out with me what does it mean if you obtain something it means you get it turned your partner saying obtaining is when you get something obtaining is when you get something so they've got those more difficult words to stretch their vocabulary and to really um expose them to other words that they may come across in their reading later on and we'll talk about how that fits in with our approach in a minute yeah. then they'll go and be the teacher and that will be the end of day one phonics the next day is day two phonics, and I'll hand over to my glamorous assistant. Thank you very much. So this is something that we're spending more time on at the moment, isn't it? So we're spending a session where we're focusing on the reading skill, and then day two we'll look at the writing. Now, some children might spend two days looking at the reading. If we think that's what they need, then they might spend more time reading those words, because a lot of the time the children's reading skills will become before their writing, so they need to be able to read it before they can write it. So tell me if I'm wrong, but this is what I would do with mine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't tell me what I do. <laughs> so what I might do, first of all, is I might quickly go through some of the cards again. So I might go through some new cards, I might go through some of the same cards. And again, I'm using my A card that I've got just here. So I'm looking at the same graph beam and the same phony that we were looking at yesterday. So I'd go back through them again and I'd say, oh, here's our new one. We've got A, snail in jail. So I'm encouraging them again to act it out and get that association between the picture and from the sound as well. So we go through some of those, and then what I'd say is, right, today what we're going to do is we're going to practice writing our new sound. So in my new sound, in my new phoneme, what letters have I got? What graphemes have I got? <laughs> so then I'm looking at, right, I've got the letters A and the letters I. So I'm going to show my children how to write the letter A, how to write the letter I, and what I'm going to get them to do is put a sound bar under it to show that it's a diagram. So what I'd ask them to do is I'd put 30 seconds on the board because there are 
30 seconds in. Half a minute. minute. Thank you. And I'd say every time you write this down, see how many you can get. Every time you write it down, I want you to say when you put the soundbar under A. So I get them to write it as many times as they can and see who can write it the most. Then what I do is I go over my cards that we looked at yesterday, have a little go at reading these again to make sure we can still remember these words, practicing sounding it out with my turn, your turn. Then what we do is we're moving on to the spelling of it. So I might first of all think, right, I'm going to use the word snail. So I'd say to the children, let's sound out the word snail together. And I'd ask them to count out how many sounds they can hear in snail. N A O. Snail. So I've four. got four sounds. But we know, Miss Allen, that we've got two letters making one sound in one of them. So they won't be just four letters. Five. There were five letters in it. Yes. So I'd ask the children to have a go at writing the word snail. So they'd all show me how they've written snail, and then we'd look at it together. So I'd say, right, what's the first sound you can hear in snail? What will the first sound be? So I'd say, you've got us. And I'm going to put my sound button underneath it. And I'd say, if you've got us, give yourself, and I'd say, one of these. And I wouldn't say give them a love heart. I'd say give yourself one of these. So we know they're looking at the board and they're keeping up with us, aren't they? And we'd go through, what's the next sound you can hear? I can hear it. Mm. I can, and it's I might say, I know, tall. sorry, that's a little bit. And I might say, give yourself one of these. So just like Miss Allen was saying earlier, each time we're doing this, we're giving the children praise. We're encouraging them to really want to do this. And I might say sometimes, what could you give? What could we give for this one? If you've got this sound, what could you give yourself? Then I might say, what's the next sound? And the children will say, A, putting a diagraph under it and a sandbar underneath it. And I might actually, at this time, I might draw a little snail, just I'm like that. that. <laughs> and the last that. sound we can hear would be the, oh, this. And I might say, give yourself a fireworks. And I'll give yourself a little fire. Um, so that's just a chance there for the children to use their encoding skills. So on day one, we're focusing on the decoding, where they're using it to read, whereas on day two, we're looking at encoding. So they're listening to the phonemes that they can hear and thinking about the graphemes or the letters they'll use to write those words down. And if a child gets it wrong, as teachers, we make the assessment because you're watching, see what the children are doing. If a child writes sail instead of snail and misses the n out, you would say to the child, if you've got the n writing snail, and you'd be looking at it and thinking, you've not. Have if you've got the n writing snail, give yourself one of these. If you haven't, quickly put it in and give yourself it anyway. Because by writing that n, they're correcting, they're thinking, they're getting that graphing phoneme correspondence, and they're correcting it. So we know they've got it wrong. We're not going to say something they can't have the phrase work because they've tried the best. Yeah. Um, so that's what we do. Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> okay, so what we thought we'd just do now for a minute is we'd just give you um, just some time. I wondered if you could um, have a go at, um, first of all, sounding out. No, if I say a word mm -hmm. and then you've got to sound it out at your computer or okay. here. Mm -hmm. So if I say the word, you've got to sound it out, but you don't have to put yourselves on speaker. So should we take it in terms of a word each? Let's do board. So sound out board if you're at home. Whisper board to yourself. How many sounds? Show me on your fingers. How many sounds? Oh, yeah, I've got some answers. Well done, Michelle. Board. How many sounds are in board? So it should be b o d board. Three sounds. Okay, Miss Tyson, your turn. Okay, how many sounds are there? Oh, I know. In rope. 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 So sound out rope. How many sounds? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see some fingers going up already in the audience. <laughs> okay, so in rope, you're right. Again, there'll be three. Oh, yeah, I can see Ooh. her. I mean, it's my mate, yeah. <laughs> there'll I've be three. Ooh, three sounds in there. Uh, oh, rope, three sounds all together. Another one, snack. That's what I mean, snack. Oh, snack. <laughs> How many sounds in snack? S -n -a snack. Four sounds. S -n -a Snack. Four sounds. I've got a good one. Go on then. Fairy. Fairy. Mm, how many sounds are fairy? Interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, very interesting. Mm -hmm. How do you think? So fairy is a bit of a tricky one. I'm trying to catch you out now. Oh, I don't, I'm not seeing that. I'm not... No, it's three. A E fairy. Three sounds in fairy. <laughs> right. Okay. The next um, little task I was going to teach you. If I say a word, have a go at sounding it out. Ooh, yes. Okay. So if you've got a pen and paper, have a little go. So we'll say a word. 
if you write it down and you add a dot underneath it, no, because then no, no, we can add a third dot. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. <laughs> and you've got a piece of the object, giving them all the answers. So the first word is snap. And the top tip to do is if you don't know, write it out first. You're watching me now. Yeah, no, look at those big tall ends. <laughs> I know, oh, I think it's because I'm like trying to do it at the so, board. No. If you put it's either a dot or a sound bar underneath. So have a go at sounding out snap. Dot is one sound and a bar is two sounds or more. Okay. Should we have a little go? Ready? What did you put? Oh, so yeah, off we go. It should be dot, 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 dot. Yeah, nice Soon. simple one. And snap. The next one is shut. Shut. So right shut. <laughs> I tried to make it bigger so everybody can see it. Mm -hmm. Shut. I hope you can see it. No. I'm sure they can sell shuttles no. to you. I know, but I want to be able to model the dots and dots. Okay. Oh, I can see some. Oh, let's see. Hold it up, Jelena. Let's see. Oh, good try. Oh, interesting. Uh -huh. Right, let's have a little look then. So it should be the S and the H make a shh sound, like shoo, shoo, shoo. So shh. So there should be a solid line. Yeah. And then it's uh and t. So dot, dot. So it should be S and H with a line under it, and uh, the U with a dot and, uh, and a T with a dot under it. One more, let's have a go at night. Night. So sound it out first so you know how many sounds. Mm, I, night. Have a go at putting your sound files that put on it. It's very popular, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, let's have a look. Oh yeah, hold it up, I'm loving this. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah. Right, okay, so it's how many sounds we've got? Let's have a look. Oh, yeah, we've got n, i, t, night, three sounds. So it should be a dot for n, a sound bar for the trigraph, the i, g, and h, and a dot. For the and if you remembered, it's three letters, one sound. So it's called a trigraph. Think of a tricycle. Then well done. You can give yourself a bonus point. Ooh. Okay, the last one, I'm conscious of time, is going to be home. Ooh. Home. That's home. Home alone. Oh, that was terrible. Man. Let's try harder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure all the parents having watches are going to race to watch us. I think they will. Talk of the town. Have to do a dance. I'm very sure. Sing a song. Ah, oh, next is fun. <laughs> right. Oh, okay. Okay. So, have we had to go at home? Mm, oh, let's, let's have a look. What have you guys done? Oh, interesting. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, so the answer is, and I can see why Magdalena, you put um, why you put the M and the U together, but it's actually a split digraph. It's a long vowel sound O, so it's O M O. So that should be that split underneath. They're holding hands under the table, and mm, the children will tell you, I'm sure. <laughs> They're like, no, that's not right. It's like this. <laughs> Okay, so thank you for that then. So the next bit okay, is talking to about more to come. Mm. Aren't you lucky they get Oh, they really are. Here all night. We're going to talk about <laughs> just some top tips and our bespoke re reading approach that we've designed. So I'm going to share my screen again. Um, what she says. Right, so, oopsie. Uh, so we had a, your turn, um, and it's important to speak in the purest time. We've spoken about that, and we've done that. There is a little recap here for you. I'm not going to play it because we're just a bit short for time, and I'm conscious you don't want to spend your day listening to us. Um, so if you click on that, you can you can go on that. So some top tips. So talk to the children in sounds. It's amazing when you say to them, "Would you like us to eat? How good they are at blending it together so they can get some sweets off you. Would you like a stick? Uh, 
I would like a sticker. I do it to my three-year-old nephew. I'm like, I'll, I'll often say to him, what does this say? At, and he's like, but then the moment I say to him, oh, can we get a chalk? He's like, chalk, where? <laughs> um, so just get them used to doing that. Um, if a child is writing, say for example, they're writing the word rain and they spell it incorrectly, say to them, no, it's A, like snail in jail. Get them to self-correct, find it on the sound map. So actually you're not correcting it for them. They're doing that work. Um, it's all about your synapses in your brain. And when they see that again or hear it, and they make that connection again, it will then be committed to the long-term memory and they're more likely to remember it and use it. You go, next one. Um, I can't see it from there. Sound um, can you not? No, I can't see it all the way from there. I have to look down here. Um, so um, when we send spelling pain with the children, what we'll do is we'll sound button those for you. So have a look at that with the children, encourage them to have a go at writing it. They can sound button it as well to practice so they can see it. Um, and also what we'll do is if we practice reading words with the children, they're reading books, we will sound button those there for the children as well. So you could always do that with the children as well at home. Yeah. Um, when children actually have to spell a word, ensure that they use yeah, their fingers. Oh, that's not how I did it. Ensure they use their fingers and um, get them to break it down into sounds. And if they struggle, repeat the word. Sometimes you'll ask a child to sound out snail and they'll write sail because of the two cons the consonant at the beginning. So really break it down and go snail. Sometimes you think, oh, and it's awful when you're really trying to like do it. And sometimes you do spit a bit and you have to think, oh, gosh. <laughs> Um, but you have to really break it down. Use your mouth and the shapes that your mouth makes to help them recognise. I'm really trying to do it. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> <doing>. <laughs> um, okay, and if a child is reading and they, they're trying to read the word city, C-I-T-Y, and they read it. E. So the, the cat went out to the it e. Oh, that actually might work. Oh, it would, wasn't it? Yeah. Hold on a minute. Um, the people walked the it e. The people walked the kitty. Can we walk the kitty? Well, they could walk well, the kitty. Two to the kitty. Yes. There we go. Um, <laughs> the people walk to the kitty. Yeah. Mm, people walk to the kitty. That doesn't quite work. What other sound can that K, uh, that C graphene make? It can make a sound. Let's try and read it again mm. and get them to identify that in as well. Um, I think it's important as well that we keep mentioning about praise as well. Encourage the children to have a go at writing it. Just have a try and see what they do. Even if it's not correct, even if they're using um, something that would be what we call phonetically plausible. So like we say with rain, we can see here the child's used um, an A and a Y, making an A sound instead. And encourage them, that's brilliant, well done. You've heard the sound there, you've heard it, heard it right. Could we use it in a different way? Absolutely. But they've done a really good job of trying that as well. And they've heard the right sounds in there. Um, yeah. yeah, and then um, ensure that um, we're, we're going to make sure reading and writing is integrated into everything we do. Um, so I think it's about spotting signs when you're out, encouraging them to read. Mm. Um, and for those children who are really struggling to write, um, why is it that they're struggling to write? Um, a lot of the time, if a child can't remember red, blue, purple, they're not going to remember a man went over the road and be able to write it by themselves. So it's important to simplify it for your child, break it down into manageable chunks and use your body. We use a body approach. So for example, there was a man. There was a man. Full stop. Again, big letter. There was a man. Full stop. Let's say it to each other. Big there, letter. Oh, big letter. There, there was, was a man. man. Full stop. What's the first thing? Big letter. Oh, yeah. There was, was a man. Big... Oh, there was going to be a big man. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh I'm just about to have eaten. I'm just going to have eaten. Right. So, um, <coughs> so then the child can remember it um, and write it. Okay. So, um, our reading approach. Now, this is probably what you're all waiting for. Yes. So, um, I have um, explained just a moment ago, it's not just about rushing the children through a reading scheme, and we simply will not be doing it. Mm -hmm. If you come into the class teacher and say, my child's had a reading book for three days, I'll say, that's brilliant, they're doing their jobs properly. Mm -hmm. um, please trust us, because we've studied this, we've looked into it, we've analysed it, we've seen the impact of it, and this will be our new step reading approach. So no matter how many times you say to us, They've had that one day already. They're definitely going to be having it another day already. Um, so what we've done is you'll see, we've mapped out the recommended phonics teaching pace, which I'll show you. Um, it's mapped out so we know ch where children will be working. So children in reception, let's say we're in reception at the moment and it's autumn one. We'd expect the vast majority of children to be working at autumn one reception. And we've mapped that out and I'll show you what that looks like. Some children may not be working at reception autumn term one because they're below where they should be. 
in which case we will teach them phonics in their class and then in stage one in step one which i'll come to in a minute in a minute we'll do all of the phonics that they need in order to help catch, catch them up or they might be part of something called sounds factory it could be that some children are working above their peers so we're in reception um, autumn one and we've got a child who when we've done the phonic assessment wow they're reading split diagraphs and they're doing all kinds of things and it is important not to compare children I know it's hard but we all progress at different levels and one child's strength isn't another so please don't get hung up on where your child is because actually sometimes children, pro children don't progress like this they might go here 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 and you know it's important that you try not to put too much pressure on them um so a child may be working above where they need to be they might be working at year one spring two for example and it's important that our phonics scheme then they will be reading a book that is matched to where they are working at and we'll make sure that in our reading provision they are taught their phonemes or graphemes or rules that they're learning which are matched closely to their reading books I'm just going to show you what that looks like. So I'm just going to stop share with you a minute. Can you still see this, everybody? Oopsie. You can see my face. Share screen. So you will see here in our Fresh, fresh Phonics teaching guide, first of all, can you see this now? Oopsie. Can you see that? Yeah. You can see here, this is the nursery provision. So things that we do for children in nursery. Then you will see that in, oopsie, you can see here, this is reception, um, and you can see the sound or the phoneme that they're learning, and then you can see the words that the children will be practicing, and then each, each one has got the, um, the card with it, and you can see what they're learning here, and it continues so you know exactly where the child is working. So that's what that looks like. Um, and then I'm just going to, Mr. Heeson, mm -hmm. I'm going to, oh no, oh, it's broken, why is it? Get me to oh, sign in again. Apple. It's been ever so naughty. <laughs> um, right, where are we up to? Right, reading approach. Oh, yeah, Can you are. see this again or not? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've spoken about them being matched, and any child who's yeah. working below will be helped to catch up. So they'll be part of what an intervention called Sounds Factory. So they'll have designated time, um, numerous times a week with an adult working at where they need to be. And that will be done um, on a one to one basis or potentially in a small group. Yeah. There'll also be personalised reading. Now, if your child gets invited to a reading club after school, it technically is in a one to four or one to six ratio. Yeah. And it, it obviously does cost the school a lot of money, but it's almost like private tuition they're free um, and it will really benefit your child so please please do support us with that you don't have to pay for it um i'll let you do can, I, actually, can I say a little bit more about step one if that's all right i'm gonna um, get you to come on well, to that and you're gonna talk second. through it oh, okay okay that's all right he's trying to stop me talking <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um so um oxford university press have said um that well, they've, they've basically looked into research and they found that 49% of pupils have limited vocabulary to um, the extent that it affects their learning. So in our approach, we are addressing that first and foremost. So when Mr. Heathson, in a minute, in not a minute, now, um, talks you through those steps, hopefully it makes sense as to why we are doing what we are doing. Off you go, Mr. Heathson. Yeah, there was a little bit more I wanted to add about choosing the book as well. Um, just because obviously um, what we're doing, our assessments are in allowing us to pinpoint exactly the sounds that our children are learning at the moment. But obviously reading is more than just sounds. Reading has got obviously the comprehension aspect to it too. So what we'll try and do is match a book so that sometimes there might be a more simple book where it might have less words in there so the children can really focus on their um, decoding skills. Whereas sometimes we might be able to think that some children might need to work on their comprehension as well. They're still learning these sounds and focusing on this. However, they can actually manage a little bit of a bigger book, might have some more text in there, some more complex ideas. So actually they can develop their comprehension alongside that as well. So the books the children might get might be slightly different at different times, just depending on what we think the children need at that moment. Um, so the steps then. So this is where um, our new approach is really coming in play. Um, I think, like Alan said earlier, um, the importance of our children learning vocabulary is just so, so important, isn't it? Isn't it? Um, and this is where it really comes in handy. So step one is where we'll be um, doing a pre-teach with the children of the book. So here we're thinking about what vocabulary might the children come across? What might they not know already? So it might be a book about, I've got 
coast on the mind because we're going to sleep ups this week. So it might be the word coast might come into it. Now I might think, hmm, does this child know what this word is? So I might spend a little bit of time talking about the coast if they don't know. And I might do a little bit of research together, finding out what that actually looks like. Now, the reason behind this is so that when the children's reading that book, it makes sense to them. They can resonate with it because they understand what it's talking about. They've had that background pre-teach there. They're making connections in their head so that when they come to read it, it starts to make sense. Um, also at this stage as well, we're thinking about any tricky words that the children might come across. So like we said earlier about the action words, and we might give the children one of the action words cards to practice at home. If they're looking at me and they, they're much trouble reading the word me, we might encourage them to practice the action so that when they come across this word in their book, they're empowered to read it, they're successful in their reading. Um, but also what we might do is um, think about the sound that this book is focusing on. So um, for example, if your child mm -hmm. is working above or below where they need to be. Yeah. So we would make sure that there's a full on teach for that. Absolutely. During yes. that step. Yeah, definitely. So there, at that point, we'll be using the phonics cards like we've just seen here. Um, we've got some of the ones just there. Um, and we'll be doing that in that session and we're practicing sound listening words together, reading them out. And um, so again, when children come across these words, they're empowered to be able to read it. Um, so that'll all take place. Now in this session, the children might not actually read too many words in the book. They might not read a single they page. They are doing reading. Yes, yeah. this is it, isn't it? So they might not read a single page in the book, but what they're doing is they're, they're developing their reading skills through that personalized approach as well. So we're thinking about exactly what each individual child needs at that point. Then on to step two. So this will probably take place in another day. So can I just add step oh, one? I'm just, I'm just oh, to know it. <laughs> but say for example, a child is reading a book about an aeroplane mm -hmm. and you're sat with a three-year-old child talking about an aeroplane. Well, if that child doesn't know what it's like to be in an aeroplane mm -hmm. and it's got all different kinds of, the, the, the main bit is to show them. So it might be, we might get a YouTube book and show them what it's like to be on an aeroplane, talk to them, develop that language so that when we come to say to them, how do you think he's feeling? Or, mm -hmm. you know, what do you think it would be like? They've got some ideas because we've shown them and given them that background knowledge. Absolutely. Um, so in step two, now this is the step where we're focusing on the reading. And like I said, this will take place on a different day. Now at this point, we're really thinking about the word reading skills of the children. So we're making sure that they can use their phonic skills, whether that be their segmenting and blending, whether they're reading by sight, whatever, wherever they, those children are at. And we're really thinking about how we can help them to be successful in their reading at that point. Um, this might take place over a few days. Um, I'd imagine that it won't take just one day to read a book. We'll spend a couple of days reading that, that book in step one, uh, step two, sorry. Then we'll eventually get to step three. So when the child's finished um, the whole book, they finish step two, we'll go back and we'll reread the book with the children. Um, and it's really important at this point to think about developing the children's fluency. So now they've come across all the words in the book, they've thought about the concepts that they're coming across, any tricky words they've got, the sounds that they're learning at this point. And step three, what we're hoping and what we're seeing in practice as well is that the children are now able to read those words and their fluency is coming on and on and on which when I say fluency it means they're able to read a lot of words more quickly so they might be going to blending in their head they might be reading words by sight and um, so that we can really see that their um, reading skills are developing and they feel they can and they think oh wow look at me right, absolutely um, yeah and like you say with confidence there it really does develop their confidence so here you will see there's a lovely video Mr. Heeson. Of... <laughs> you know, it's a standing joke so Mr Heeson's um, videos always <laughs> They capture in the yes. most funny angle. The, one the of tour you of the actually. classroom is horrendous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you will be able to click on this and the approach is explained. It's a 15 minute video. Yeah. So please do feel free to, to watch that. Um, and I'm at the end onto any questions. So has anybody got any questions that they would like to ask or anything they'd like to talk about? Or say? Did you find it helpful to kind of go through that and how we do it? Yeah. Hi there. Um, oh, hi, Daddy. Question. Um, hi, guys. Uh, yeah, basically, uh, well, firstly, I, I think this session has been really useful. Thanks. I've, I've certainly learned a lot. Um, I had a question which was regarding that last piece around uh, the reading. Um, our, our son, Joey, he's got a really good memory. So when he reads books, uh, he, he remembers like the words. So uh, any kind of tips for, I guess, that, that piece around supporting him with reading when he's clearly like remembering something rather than reading it out? How do you kind of tackle that? 
So that will be, so obviously it sounds like he's got a photographic memory and that's the way he learns to read. He's probably one of the children that actually phonics isn't his approach towards reading. Um, however, when he comes across that, and it's not all about passing a phonics screen check, it's really not. But when he comes across an unfamiliar word, he will need to use and apply his phonics in order to be able to read any word or write any word, for example. So I think what we just need to do is maybe it might be worth you just double checking and finding, say for example, he's reading the word snail and you might cover up the S, the N and the L and say, oh, what sound is that making in the middle, Joey? So he then might go, oh, it's A. Oh, brilliant, you know he's making those phonic links. Um, and I think it is really about stretching him in other ways. So for example, asking him those questions, getting him to, it's called inferring meaning, saying to him, what do you, how do you think they might be feeling and why? Because when you look at, um, when they get to year two and they're making predictions about a text and they're inferring meaning about what something might mean, that is the higher order thinking skills. So you might even say to him, oh, you've got the word said, can you think of another word for said? We could replace the word said with exclaimed. So you're broadening his vocabulary and you're still keeping that going. But it might be with Joey, he might read more quickly. So actually you might get through those steps quicker because he's sounding those steps and then you can get his new books. That makes sense. And, uh, yeah, and like you say, it's thinking about that comprehension then as well, isn't it? You know, we can read this, we can read it by sight. That's absolutely fine. Can we understand what we're reading? Um, and in the video that I've um, done, which you'll be able to see, um, I talk a little bit more about the reading skills that we develop with the children as well. So hopefully that might come in handy. Lovely. Thanks very much. Thank you. Any other questions? Not hard something. ones. <laughs> <laughs> something came up here. Um, um, are there any parent lessons still at home? Any other results to... I think um, that's a really good question from Emma um, about parent lessons and getting parents to kind of understand. I think um, what we'd really like to do as soon as we can is invite our parents in to watch a phonic lesson. So you can come and see what does this look like in the classroom and you will see your little people hopefully jumping around and being um, you know, energetic and engaging in those. Yeah. Do you have any learning tips for um, you too? I think as well, sorry, I was just going to say, in regards to helping your child at home as well, what we're trying to do is upload the sounds that the children are learning um, in the week. So we'll put some words on there and there's the actual sound card as well and the words that they're learning as well. So that if you want to practice that at home together, that would really help them just to consolidate their learning and what they're doing at school and as well. also the little cards as well, if you did. Yeah, these, again, these are available on the Fresh Phonics site. So these are just little cards just here. The same as we've got the big ones, so I think they're very expensive, um, but these are the ones that we use 10 pounds so these ones just have all the, all the ones on that we're learning in school and they've got a little rhyme on the back as well yeah yeah um regarding year two children um just saw do you have any learning tips for year two children i think it really is about looking at the rules um more in year two and making sure that what we found is that because of covid our year two children have missed the most of their education they missed year one and they miss some of reception. Mm -hmm. So actually it really is everything we're saying about the year one curriculum, we're finding that yeah. they've got gaps in year two and that is because of COVID when we're trying to address that. So I would just say, read, 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 read and more read is yeah. what I would say. And it's like we say as well, thinking about reading, obviously we, most of the time reading will come before writing. So, you know, it really will empower them to be successful with that. How does it work if a child can't talk? Um, so what will happen is, Obviously, that's the very beginning stages of phonics. So I had um, a child initially um, <laughs> that I used to teach, and she couldn't say eh at all. She'd say ah, ah, ah. And I really had to work with her at making the right shape with her mouth. And you'll often find, like, with and often, they'll say, like, or they'll say thief instead of thief, or they'll say this instead of this or so yes. or yes um it's like i've just had to correct my nephew he's been saying tum instead of come um and um what's the other one he does um tusted instead of custard so it's really about working with the children to make the shapes with their mouths going on listening works walks hat walks that's a brilliant <laughs> slip how do we know that a train makes a ch choo choo sound if they haven't heard a ch Choo choo sound. Mm -hmm. It's all about developing their memory so that then they can access the phonics. So you will see in this um, in this approach, and I can share this with you. There's a, a range of different things that we do with our children in nursery. Um, oh, go down. Why is it being naughty? Some children might be doing this in reception. Why won't it go down? Well, I would show you, but it's choosing. Oh, oh here we go. Oopsie. Oh, 
oh, that's term by term. So you can see here, like listening walks, memory games, making sure the children are saying sounds properly, um, really frequent daily stories and nursery rhymes. If they can't talk, they might not have been engrossed in all that language and have the confidence. So it's making sure they hear us all the time and they're part of that reading. Reading to them is absolutely crucial. Um, animal sounds, can they make those sounds? So you can kind of see sounds in their name. Um, I spy, even if, you know, I spy something going with and you could have three things out in front of them. Can they point to the sunshine? Because they might not be able to say sun, but they might understand that that makes a s sound um, and the other things don't, for example, but it will come. Anything else? Um, oh yeah, that's that. that yeah. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. And hopefully we've um, not bored you to tears. Um, and I would say the main message is we really prioritise reading and we'll do everything we can to support your child to be a confident and successful reader who is empowered um, and thirsty for more knowledge. And if there's anything at all you need from us, please do just let us know. Thanks, guys. I'm going to end my thingy now. <laughs>